Troy from uh, Queens of Stone Age with me right now. First off, Troy, I want to say how excited I am for the new album in New Times Roman, which comes out on the 16th. It does, yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm glad it's finally uh, about to arrive, yeah. I mean, we've been working on it for a while, and, and I, think it's, uh, I think it's time to unleash it. Yeah, let's do this. It, it's crazy to me to think back and that Songs for the Deaf has been out for more than 20 years now. Did you think that when you were asked to do that tour for that album that you'd still be a part of Queens? It's so funny because, you know, at the time, it, it just seemed like I was going to join for maybe a tour or two. It didn't seem like, you know, it was, it was because, the you know, the, the lineup was constantly rotating at that time. And I was, I was still making the, uh, the second Perfect Circle record, 13th Step. And when I, you know, and when I joined, you know, I was able to finish that. And then there was this kind of whole, like, well, am I going to stay with Perfect Circle? Or am I going to do this? And um, I, I ended up going with Queens because for, for well, at the, at the time, you know, um, you know, uh, there was a lot of kind of activity with Tool and yeah. Maynard was kind of busy with that. And so I felt that I'd have more, um, more of a, a, you know, more work to do, I guess. How hard was it for you to go up to, uh, to the members of APC and be like, Hey man, I'm out. I'm going to join Queens full time. It was very difficult because, um, and it's, it's funny. I, I still, I mean, we're, we're all still really good friends and I just saw Maynard's in Columbus, uh, and he's constantly talking about, you know, doing more and more with, you know, with a perfect circle. And I'm, he's always had the consideration to ask me to be involved. And I really enjoy that. So, but at the time it was, it was pretty difficult because I love both, both bands, you know? Um, and uh, it's hard to tell your friends that you're not going to be working with them as much. <laughs> Troy, what, what is your favorite part of the journey of a new record? Is it the creating the art, creating the record itself, the release, the touring? What, what, what's, what's, uh, what gets you going on that? Well, I would have to say that for some, you know, for some reason, I think, you know, I, I mean, also, we've just been through this crazy pandemic thing that, that didn't really help the process of us making this record. Um, you know, the making of the record is a labor of love and it's, it, it, it takes an, a, an intense amount of attention, you know, and, you know, and you're like, well, you know, what are you doing? You're in a rock and roll band and, and you know, you're not like curing cancer, but for us, it's a very, you know, intense sort of like paying attention to detail. The lyrics have to be perfect. And, you know, there's got to be this sort of balance of like, you know, you're, yeah, you're making a song, but the performance needs to be wild or it has to, it has to fit, you know, it has to, we have to, you have to kind of say something with your performance. So you have to be in a mindset. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of mental, um, strength so the making of the record you know is its own sort of reward when it's done mm -hmm. um but i kind of like this 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 part of the, the process right now where we're in between like you know announcing the new record and putting out a song here and a song there and hearing the feedback i feel like there's an excitement that i you know like you brought up, you know, songs for the deaf. There was that kind of excitement too, before the record was released. That you know, yeah. I kind of get I get off on that sort of like like kind of in between the record and the tour phase of like it feels like a wave swelling, you know, and, and you're about to jump on your board and and take this wild ride. So I'm enjoying that part that this part of the process right now and talking to folks like you and, and, you know, you, you seem, you know, like I, I, I'm assuming you've heard some of it at least. Oh yeah. I've, I've heard, I've heard the two, two, the two songs that have been released off of it. 
And yeah, uh, okay. yeah that's what makes me so stoked about this album, man. So yeah, it's I, I am stoked about it too because it's it's a good rock record. Um, and you know, that's what we do. We're we're, we're a rock and roll band. Um, I, there's I guitars. You know what I mean? There's guitars. Yeah, there's drum drums and. <laughs> You don't see, you don't hear a lot of that anymore. That you don't really. That's my point, and it's sort of like it's kind of like a back to the basics kind of Queen's record for us. I think uh, with with some, you know, like Carnivore sounds to me like completely different for us. But you know, that's part of it too. New new stuff is always trying to spread your wings and, and do something different is is also rewarding when it's when it when you know when you listen back and you go huh yeah cool let's, <laughs> let's do i don't i don't know i'm an idiot um hard hardcore queens fans probably know about the desert sessions you were a part yeah. of the seven and eight um is there any possibility of getting in on another desert se desert sessions for you actually i was on a nine nine and ten um which was with pj harvey and um and um, I'm trying to think of uh, Chris Goss. A, a, lot, a lot of the folks in the desert were on that one. Brian O'Connor, Joey C. Um, and uh, so I guess the philosophy of the desert sessions is like you get asked to do it. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. Josh doesn't take requests, you know, for that. He's the one picking and choosing all the, all the characters. And so the chances of, and this is also, you know, I mean, an opportunity for him to continually reach out and, and work with different people that normally you wouldn't work with. So I, I don't expect to be a part of another one. If, I, if I'm asked, of course I would do it. But I, I think the idea is to continually work with new, new artists and, and, and people that might feel like it might feel awkward you know if you think about it like you know and who would have thunk that jake shears and and you know would would be someone that would end up singing on a queen's record and doing you know a, a desert sessions and then it's you like got billy like gibbons. Les billy gibbons as well yeah and then there's like les claypool who i had the honor of playing with you know a few nights ago um he's so good the, wonderful person um the primus guys are, are some of my favorite people um we did a benefit for my friend uh another canadian uh jimmy hayward who's a uh, film director and uh it was me les lair tim alexander oh yeah also, nice. also plays the first song on the first perfect circle record he was in the band for a little bit um, and then Danny Carey and Justin Chancellor, and we all played a bunch of Primus and Tool stuff, and we played. Uh, there was a dueling drum solo on the Moby <laughs> Dick with Danny Carey and Tim Alexander. That was pretty gnarly. Wow. But in, anyways, my point is like, um, you know, it's like the Desert Sessions is an opportunity to kind of get get out of your comfort zone and make something up on the spot and make it good so that's uh, yeah i would love to do it again but i i don't expect it <laughs> I, I was gonna ask you what's one thing you haven't done yet in your career but you've pretty much done everything is there anything left on your bucket list i just don't know i mean i i i'm just i feel lucky you know um and I think right now in, in, in this moment, I'm really looking forward to what, what's going on with the Queens. Um, and so the bucket list, you know, for me is, is something that, I mean, I've gotten to do a lot of cool things. I got to play with the damned too. That was, yeah, that's right. That was a lot of fun. And that was, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky to get these sort of like, um, you know, opportunities and, I just think I, I would like to, you know, I'd like to see the Queens, you know, be out there for a while this time, you know, and go to some different places and 
because for me, traveling is a, is a, it's a big, especially after the pandemic, I'm ready to go out and see the world again. Troy, it's been an absolute honor chatting with you today. Uh, really Cheers. looking forward to the new Queens record in New Times Roman. That's coming out on the 16th. And look forward to uh, seeing you when you come to town, man. Excellent. Thank you so much. We'll see you, man. Thank you very much, Troy. You got it.